ಶಂಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ್ತನಕೀರ
uh, squander your energy by this bestial emotions he says uh, lust anger and greed so uh, when you are preparing for the examination what should be your attitude that lord krishna teaches in gita he says do your best see when you say your best like what's your good name prishabano ah prishabano what is your good name because yeah because because yeah so prishabano's best is different from vikas's best you all agree because each and every one of us sitting here your best is different uh, you know each of you will perform according to your capacity is it uh, like for example when uh, lord uh, rama told the vanaras to build a setu bandha the hanuman like monkeys were all putting big boulders uh, and the squirrel was putting a small stones uh, so but lord rama appreciated both both of them hanuman and the squirrel because everybody can do according to their capacity so this is one thing you have to check whether you are giving your best huh? are you giving your best you should check if you are not giving your best that means you are actually becoming uh, diverted by various anxieties and worries huh? like i told you in the beginning huh? you are thinking how the examination paper is going to be you know my that friend is more smart and uh, he has uh, studied more syllabus than me <laughs> i haven't studied so these kind of thoughts swallow over time and they don't let us do our best huh? so so what, what krishna says you do your best huh? and then uh, another interesting thing like krishna says in this world you are a co-worker with god huh? which means your contribution in anything in this world is only 50% only other 50% god puts like for example i saw the seed god has to give the rains i give the interview the panel has to choose me for the job you know i have to appear in the examination and the invigilators will give me marks correct now so only half uh, contribution is mine but generally the most amazing thing in this world is instead of worrying about your contribution our mind always hovers over what is not in my control for example i am going to write exam here is the book i have to study but instead of studying i am worrying about the results which is not in my hands correct should i worry about what is in my hands or should i worry about what is in someone else's hand huh? yeah <laughs> correct no? so how ridiculous it is that the whole world is worrying about always things which are not in our, our hands like once a couple of farmers met with each other so one farmer asked other hey what did you put for this year rice or wheat or corn and the other farmer said i didn't put anything he said why i want to play safe because rains may not come like that he said you know but then the next month the heavy rain started coming huh? so the farmer who had already sown the seeds he stood to gain because the crop started growing whereas this fellow thought he will play safe by not uh, sowing any seed so when the rains came he couldn't do anything uh, his his uh, kheti was remaining empty correct no yeah. why the mistake of the uh, this farmer is what he didn't do his part Uh, he was uh, just uh, speculating about the rains whether they will come or not so he was trying to focus his attention on what was not in his control uh, whereas the first farmer had sown the seed he said i have done my part now let god do his part uh, and when god may give rain or may not give rain but we should do our part uh, and if you have sown the seed even if rain doesn't come now next month it may come uh, and then it may grow similarly in your uh, study you should think about what is in my hands what is in god's hands eh? that is one thing lord krishna teaches in the gita that learn to do your best hmm? and another thing is is don't take anxiety for what is not in your hands eh? unnecessarily don't take anxiety for that once upon a time in a village uh, <coughs> there was going to be ipl match eh? cricket match very big uh, hmm. so practically lakhs of people were supposed to come and attend eh? the stadium was being built there there was an old lady in that village she was running here and there taking too much tension people asked her why are you so much in tension she said oh a lakh people are going to come to our village till now we never had such a big program i am in tension and how are we going to organize this program and people told her that you are not organizing anything <laughs> you are just living in your hut everything is going on properly why do you take tension but she was taking tension for something which was not in her hands 
she was only a witness to that she was just watching but unnecessarily she was taking tension everything was properly arranged and the match got over and everybody went back and she was uh, later on realizing i need not have taken any tension because she is not doing anything similarly what is not in my hand should i take tension for that uh, no need to take tension uh, krishna says with the your mind uh, from from that uh, unnecessarily taking tension this is the meaning of uh, doing uh, your best and let god do the rest another important thing that he teaches is god knows best whatever he does for you uh, has some purpose has some meaning uh, he doesn't do without a cause why he does what he does huh? his actions are very mysterious and very amazing once upon a time a man who went in a uh, i mean a boat you know just for surfing and enjoying in the ocean but suddenly you know there was a very heavy current of water and he got you know his boat uh, was toppled upside down it broke huh? and eventually he landed he got stranded in a village somewhere mm-hmm. i mean it was an island huh? he was practically alone and uh, he was wondering how will i reach back the other shores uh, of my place and what food will i get in this uh, island he was wondering <coughs> so he walked about he got some fruit bearing trees he plucked some fruits but the night he became afraid maybe lions and tigers may come huh? in the night when it is dark so he climbed up a tree <coughs> and put his hands and legs like this in the branches of the tree and managed to sleep and sure enough he saw the tiger's lions roaming down huh? mm. so next day when he got down from the tree then the animals go to seclusion in the day time they don't come out huh? then he gathered some bamboos and everything from the forest and he built a hut mm. there were abundant fruits in that uh, island he got the fruits and he was surviving hoping that some ship may come and i can shout and they'll take me mm. so two days three days four days passed Uh, one of the days evening when he was coming back to the hut he saw the hut was burning <laughs> big uh, fire it was a blaze huh? smoke was going up in the sky he loudly cried and criticized god huh? he said this was the only hut i made for my living now he has burned down the, this hut also already god was cruel to me by st- making me stranded in the island and with no food i am just surviving on fruits today he burned my hut also what kind of god is this is very unreasonable he was telling but at that time uh, a ship arrived there in the island and to his great surprise because many ships in the past passed he shouted loudly nobody heard him huh? but now the ship on its own came here so he was very grateful and they took him up in their ship and he asked them how did you guys uh, recognize i that i am here they said because we saw the big smoke in the sky huh? in the fire they said so then he understood why god burnt down his hut because by that fire god, you know lord helped him to get in touch with the people in the ship although he missed several ships before hmm? in your life also if, uh, if something clicks for you you achieved success you are very happy that you made it at last huh? you are very proud that i i cracked this exam and i got uh, placed in this position and all that but what if sometime we don't succeed in the exam so how do we take it hmm? so many people think i am a fool i am good for nothing and my parents are unhappy and what will world say so we also have to develop the courage to face failures knowing well that god has a b plan for me if a plan didn't work huh? he has got a b plan for me huh? and what is that plan i may not know but he is always mysterious he will gradually reveal at a particular time why he did what he did eventually it will be known like i met heard the story of uh, uh, the man who Uh, again this is another fellow criticizes god that he made a big pumpkin and a small uh, creeper huh? yeah. and he put a small fruit in a banyan tree but when the banyan tree fruit fell on his forehead then he realized uh, how painful it was small fruit if the big fruit was on the up in the tree <laughs> his head would have broken is it not true so then he said god is not crazy i am crazy he said huh? i thought I, i i have a better plan he thought like that in your life also We, we should have a conviction that god knows best hmm. he knows what is best Th- there is a reason for that why i am saying this god can see your past he can see your future and he can see your present so but we can only see the present isolated from past and future therefore we can't just understand what it is hmm. like imagine your mother is doing embroidery work in a cloth and a child is going from here crawling and seeing behind this embroidered cloth if you see lot of 
complex uh, colorful uh, uh, you know threads will be there you have seen that and the child was telling mother mom why are you wasting time with this complex threads <laughs> you know you are wasting time with so many colorful threads all confusing and mind boggling she told the child see you are seeing from your side you come from this side and see so when the child came from this side he saw a beautiful embroidery huh? she was making some krishna standing in front of the cow she had made a beautiful embroidery but from the other side child couldn't make out what it is so we are on this side or we are on this side side ah we are on the thread side <laughs> we are like shocked <laughs> why god is doing this to me sometimes god may take away a smaller thing and give you a bigger thing who knows he has something better awaiting you which you may not know so one should be convinced that god knows best one one another important thing to know is he is also your supreme well-wisher god is the well-wisher of every jeeva every living being and he is eyes are a witness always he is always watching he is a witness he is my well-wisher he will do what is good for me even if what he does is painful to me it is good for me like for example one time my mother took me to a doctor the doctor gave me some he told me which chocolate she want to eat so four bottles were there i said okay give me one of each let me see so i asked all so i picked up two here two here and he was just looking at it which one to eat first they all were nicely packed very attractive meantime my mother was catching my hand doctor was giving injection i was shocked what is this strange thing <laughs> that, that was the first injection i took in my life I never knew what an injection is. I saw that it was a needle. This one was putting in the hand, and I was wondering. And I was surprised. My mother was also standing behind and holding my hand. And he gave me the chocolate to eat. But before I could consider eating it, this came. Then I jumped up. The doctor said, "No, no, no, no jumping. Sit down." And I quickly put it and sent the medicine in, and he took it out. And I cried like anything. He was a child specialist doctor. So he picked me up and showed me in the mirror. See, if you cry, you don't look beautiful. See here. <laughs> ah, I was crying like. So then my mother was wiping the tears, and I ate the chocolates after that. Of course, I was crying also, eating chocolate also both. Yeah. And when I was going back, I was angry with my mother. I told her, "See, that fellow is a fool number one. He is uh, putting a needle, and how are you catching my hands?" You know? My mother said, "No, no, beta, it's very good for you." He said, "Good for me." So if it is good for me, it's good for you. Tomorrow I will tell him to put for you also. <laughs> I said, you know, I was telling her. So I didn't know actually it is good for me because I was having some fever or something. By the injection, it became good. Sometimes when God gives us something painful, it's uh, we wonder why He is giving me something painful. How it is good for me, I can't see. Huh? But just as my mother knows that it is good for me, God also knows it is good for me. Huh? What comes in my life? Huh? One good thing you will see. if you have to face some challenges in life you always learn a lesson out of it huh? uh, in case you couldn't make it into something you are trying a second attempt a third attempt uh, you should always know that you know if something comes painful what lessons can i learn from this maybe i can be a little more serious in my preparation i do my best and also i just told you each of your best is different huh? you all have uh, certain amount of iq certain amount of ability to crack examination and you are putting your best efforts uh, you are getting guidance from others and putting your best he says do your best and leave the rest another formula that krishna teaches is hope for the best he says and be prepared for the worst, worst. now for example a boy is going in a bicycle hmm? he falls off and then he gets a wound in the knee hmm? or he is going in a bicycle you know he falls off and he gets a fracture is a more serious thing huh? or if the boy fell off the cycle and he hit his head on a stone and he died on the spot so this is the most serious so in this out of this three which is the worst boy dying isn't it and which is the best that can happen little small wound in the knee right no which can be cured in 2 3 days so krishna says be prepared for the i mean uh, 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 be prepared for the worst and hope for the best so what the best thing can happen you write it down huh? what the worst thing that can happen now even when that boy died the atma never dies you know that huh? atma always survives after death he will be again given a replacement body hmm? when the atma leaves one body he talk about another body just like you are changing your dress every day so even the worst of the occurrences it cannot be counted as worst because atma can not be cut by scissors cannot be burned by fire huh? 
like that. In the same manner, what is the best thing that can happen to all of you? You crack the examination and you achieve your goal eh, for which you are studying for the examination. And then you are like, I know I am a winner, you are very happy. Eh? And what is the worst thing that can happen? You tried once, twice, thrice, you, you couldn't make it. Then you have to think of plan B or plan C, to think of. But for uh, generally educated boys, you know, if they couldn't make it uh, in something, it appears like death itself eh, for them. Eh? Like one boy in one of the IITs, he got 17 lakhs per annum, you know, what do you call it, uh, uh, job, placement. So he sent to his fiancée that, see, I got 70 lakhs per annum, job, very good job I got. It was in a WhatsApp group he sent. There were many others also. Huh? And she replied back telling him, what is so great about it, your classmate, you know, he got 25 lakhs per annum, another job. Like that she giggled and she replied back. The same day he committed suicide. Huh? Because he couldn't take it. Huh? Because what, I, what was the problem was, one thing is it was a public forum, <coughs> public. Many, there were 30, 40 students receiving it. It was a WhatsApp group. And another thing is, you know, his fiancée, he considered uh, that he, I'm going to marry her. She's my life partner. But she ridiculed him in the public. Correct, no? And that too, she compared him with his neighbor who was sitting next to him in the class. Huh? And he couldn't take it. So, when I heard this news, I felt that this boy had a very narrow-minded picture of life. Huh? Very like a kupamunduk, we call it, like a frog in the well. For him, you know, my image in, in the student's eyes and my greatness and my ego, all these things are very important. Because of that, he committed suicide. Otherwise, if you think very deeply about this, what is life in this world, if you see, see everybody is born. Like you heard this, you know, Solomon Grandi, born on Monday, you know, you know, married on Wednesday and then died on Sunday. <laughs> There's a song like that. Huh? In this world you will see, if you see this tiny fly in the night, you know, night 10 o'clock it is born, 11 o'clock it is a youth, 12 o'clock it is married, 1 o'clock it begets children, 2 o'clock the children are married, huh? and then 3 o'clock it is dead and gone. Huh? And morning you see there will be so many flies lying on the ground, you will see. It is just, uh, you know, one night it lives, that's all. And a dog lives three, four, five years, it lives. Cow lives fifteen years. Huh? And some tortoise and others, they live thirty years to fifty years, something like that. A whale lives for some uh, three hundred years. A tree may live for thousand years. These are all different lifespans. Humans live for hundred years or so. So we all are living in this body for some period of time. And then you leave the body and go to next body, third body, fourth body. God is giving you multiple bodies to give you opportunity to bring out a beautiful personality out of you. Huh? Right now our personality, we have an angel and animal within us. Huh? So we have to bring out the angel and drive out the animal. Huh? So angel, angel is a person who is free from any mal malicious intentions, he is free from anger, greed, pride, envy, illusion, all those things. Huh? When the, uh, like Hanuman-like personality. Huh? But within us now there is Hanuman also, Ravana also, both. <laughs> so we have to drive out the Ravana and bring out the Hanuman. Father is giving us many lifetimes, he's putting. So, uh, if, I, if this boy was not committing suicide, he was bewildered or something, I would have explained to him that your life in this world is like building a sandcastle in an ocean beach. Hmm? Like I build a sandcastle, I make windows, I make entrance door, everything, big beautiful castle. But then when my mom is calling, you know, better it's getting dark now, let's go home. I just dust my hand and go with them, right? So, my relationship is with the seashore or with the parents, tell me. No, with the parents. With the seashore, my relationship is only one evening. Huh? With my parents, my relationship is in a hundred years, isn't it? Much bigger than that. Similarly, our relationship with this world is temporary. Because your, this body is temporary. Like I am IIT Bombay man. <coughs> when I die, next life, can I carry my IIT degree with me? No. Can I say that, you know, from Puru I am carrying my degree and I can carry next life like a baby coming out of the womb with a degree? Can I do that? Huh? I can't carry. <laughs> I will have to go again, start with ba ba blank. Shit. Have you any will? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Isn't it? I start from that again, all over again. High degree is gone, the previous life. So, life is temporary. Huh? I have uh, f finished my previous life. In the same manner, you are getting, I mean, cracking the exam or not cracking the exam. This is all within one lifespan, which is like one flash in the time span of eternity. This universe has been existing for millions of years. Huh? And this is only a small life. Don't take this one life as all in all. Huh? 
This is like uh, making a sand castle in a seashore. Huh? Your relationship is with the uh, Lakshmi Narayan, Sita Ram, Radha Krishna. They are your mother and father. They are global mother and father. Hmm? And uh, because you have forgotten global mother father, you are given a local mother father. You have a global coordinate, local coordinate, right? Isn't it? So the local mother father are changing every time. So in this life you have one. After 100 years you have one more. Then second one, third one, fourth one, like that. So don't uh, take life like a game. Uh, take life like a play. Uh, just like sometimes in play you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, Krishna says, what is that to worry about? Uh, do, it, do your duty well. Actually, having done your duty well itself is a good thing. Uh, if you have studied well, it's going to be uh, helpful for you in the uh, future also. Like imagine one boy studied for GRE TOEFL. He couldn't crack it. Uh, two times he tried, he couldn't crack it. Then he decided to go for CAT. The same vocabs helped him in CAT. Uh, because you need to memorize a lot of vocabs for that. <coughs> then CAT he cracked. Then he got into IAM after that. So, <coughs> your study is never going to go waste. You are evolving, certainly, by your study. And you are becoming a more great, greater thinker. You are becoming more evolved, more intelligent. And this intelligence is going to help you in your professional life in future. It's never a waste. And if you crack the exam, well done. Congratulations. You, you take the post and go ahead. But we should know that we have material life, we have spiritual life. Huh? Material life is temporary, spiritual life is eternal. Huh? And material life will bring forth success and failure, pleasure and pain, honor and dishonor. That's the nature of this world. Huh? Whereas in spiritual life, if one takes to it, you go to your eternal platform where you go beyond these dualities. Uh, right now we are feeling very hot. In spiritual world, you never feel this. <laughs> there is no, no heat or cold. There is no old age and young age. There is no birth and death. Hmm? There is no disease and healthiness. In the spiritual world, there is a same, constant world of happiness. It is. So, we have somehow fallen from that to this place. While here, do your academic duties well. But remember that this is not all in all. Huh? <coughs> That's what Krishna teaches Arjuna. Hatova prapsasi svargam jitvava bhokshase mahim. Like that he says, if you die, Arjuna, no worry, you will attain heaven because you are doing the righteous duty. Huh? And if you win the battle, you can rule the unrivaled kingdom on the earth, he says. <coughs> Similarly, if you all of you crack the exam, you are a winner and then you achieve your goals, or your dreams, you got it. And even if you don't win, it's still not a loss. You've studied, you have become a better man. Now, the focus that you all have now for studying for this exam has made you a better individual than what you were before, correct? No? You were not so focused before. Now, you've got the reading room now. And I just went into the reading room and I saw everybody was like a laser focus. Eh? There's a pin drop silence. You cannot even allow the mobile sound there, correct? No? No, no mobiles are allowed there. And so this is, and looking at them, I feel inspired to study Bhagavad Gita like this. <laughs> so Tukaram Prabhu said he comes to study here. Eh? Because when he sees them, he feels inspired. Uh, I also have to study my subjects well. So these boys, Maybe in the previous years, they might not have been so focused. But coming here, seeing one another, it's, uh, you are all getting inspired by one another to be more focused. Huh? So put your full focus. And uh, like Arjuna was fully concentrated in whatever he did. You do your part. Do your best. And let God do the rest. And have trust in God's uh, actions. Uh, that he will do whatever he is doing is good for you. If he blocks your plan A, he has a better plan for you, which is B. Huh? And what is that plan? He will reveal to you eventually. Hmm? There are people who uh, try to go in one line. Like one fellow was trying to start become an entrepreneur. Huh? He wanted to make a business. So in two years he failed. Uh, and he had a big loss. Uh, <coughs> then after that, uh, he gave up the business and he had to pay back some loan. Then he switched out to teaching line. And teaching line, he boomed like anything. He got tuition classes, he started. Tuition class started making monthly 2-3 lakh rupees monthly because he turned out to become one of the best teachers in mathematics and physics. Uh, wherever you see in the city, you will see his photo along with his board. You tell his name, children just come <laughs> rushing to learn from him. So later on he was telling, Prabh Prabhuji, when I tried for doing business, I got a flop. I tried to teach, that became a business <laughs> for me now. Now I am getting more profit than what I was making in business he was selling. So, God blocked his one route and uh, gave him a better opening in another direction. Hmm. 
So when you when you think like this, you will not commit suicide foolishly like that boy. Rather, you will you'll be able to see a brighter future even at the end of the tunnel, huh? uh, which you may not be able to immediately see from here. Huh? But by that's the beauty of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita gives you hope and confidence and inner courage and strength and focus, and it helps you to take your mind away from useless thoughts which are uh, not in your hands. For example, the useless thoughts about the worry about the result, the worry about other things which I told you, they can be easily taken away because Bhagavad teaches you, be dutiful yet detached. Huh? Be dutiful to your own work and be detached from the worry about the result, leaving it to God. Shri Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki. So, in YouTube if you go and put uh, Radhisham Das, do your best if you put and leave the rest. You will get one lecture which is more exhaustive than this. I only spoke a few minutes here. There you will get a PPT also. I have spoken a bit. Just one point I spoke from that. But there uh, I elaborate on uh, two formula, uh, two different formula uh, for how to do our best and leave the rest to God and we and do our duties peacefully without getting uh, tense inside. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was a very nice experience for me coming here. I saw one similar uh, reading room in Bhopal also. You have started there also, no? Yeah, there is one there. And here you have one or two like this. Opposite temple we have one. Once okay. we visited there, opposite temple. Ah, one. correct. That was one more. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah. So approximately how many students come here daily to study? Total this one and that one more than 400 students. Really? In one day? One day foreign students come yeah, and go. They, they, like, they subscribe monthly. Ah, correct. So they take the turns of the day different. They have fixed the slots. Fixed, fixed, fixed slots. Right, 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 right. Very wonderful. Very beautiful system it is. I, after seeing this, I feel for brahmacharis, I want to make table like this. Close there. <laughs> <coughs> what do you call it? Cubicle. Cabin. Yeah. Uh, cabins. You make a cabin and give them, just focus. <laughs> Keep your books inside. If a brahmacharya study like this, they'll fly back to Godhead yes. with this focus. <laughs> you know? Nobody is there to disturb us. Yeah, nobody is there to disturb. But we get disturbed a lot, correct? No? A lot of phone calls <laughs> management. We have to study like this, boys, with complete focus. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Baba.